Hi, it's Dave T here with another caravan accessories and DIY video. And if like me, you'd rather not be able to smell the contents of your chemical toilet, then this video could well be for you. We've tried various chemicals over the years, and while some have nicer scents than others, there's no getting away from the fact if you can smell the chemical, then you are in fact smelling, well, you know what. The solution, of course, is to try and stop any smell coming out of the cassette at all. And that's why today I'm gonna to be fitting the Fetford C260 electric ventilator kit. So before I start, I'll explain basically how it works. On the base side of the cassette, you may have noticed a hole which holds a cross-section beam. The beam, as you can see here, can actually move up and down. On the cassette receiver housing, there is a slight ramp in the floor, and when the cassette is slid into position, the cross-section beam is pushed up. At the top of the beam is a seesaw arrangement to operate a valve, and all of this basically means that when the cassette is in position, a valve is opened, allowing any pressure buildup within the cassette to be released down the same tube. This avoids any excess pressure ejecting noxious gases when the toilet is open for use. However, because the pressure is still just balanced with what's in the van, there's nothing to stop any likely warm air within the cassette rising and so the smell escaping. The ventilator fan works by adding a small electric fan into the system along with an external vent tube down through the floor via a supplied charcoal filter. The kit includes a modified control board which automatically activates the fan whenever the toilet is flushed. So with the ventilator kit fitted, as soon as the toilet is flushed, the airflow is going from the bathroom down through the toilet and out of the van. This makes it almost impossible for any smells from the toilet to enter the bathroom. There is another product on the market called a SOG, that's S-O-G, which works on a similar principle, but with the fan mounted in the actual cassette hatch door and involving some piping, which is a little bit kind of DIY to my mind. SOGs appear to be marketed on the basis of using the additional airflow to avoid the actual use of chemicals altogether and relying on natural oxidization of the cassette contents. Now, I imagine the same principle applies to the Fetford ventilator, but just for full disclosure, we are still intending to use chemicals. All that I'm trying to do is ensure that the bathroom remains smell-free as possible. So I'm here now at the storage yard. It's a freezing cold day. It's kind of mid to late January and uh, a bit of a frost on the ground. But uh, I don't know if the mic's gonna pick this up. But all I can hear from all around me in the storage yard is alarms going off in people's caravans. So not the full actual uh, theft alarm, but I guess it's like fridges and smoke alarms and bits and bobs like that that are running out of battery power and stuff, but it's, every di different direction there's beep 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 but anyway so the instructions for this are fairly straightforward and basically the first thing you need to do because there's so many different variations and models of the c260 uh, toilet system is you need to check the serial number and then each of these steps basically has an indicator as to which serial numbers uh, or serial number or model numbers should um, be the steps should apply to. So the first thing I need to do, I have actually already done this but I'll show you now, the first thing I need to do is check the serial number or the model number I should say and then from that we'll start running through the specs. So here we go. Section number six on the instructions is not applicable for certain models, it appears to be applicable for mine, and it was to disconnect the water hose. But from the outside, I couldn't see where it was. Now in our van above the toilet, we have this, where you can now see, this is the flush tank. 
this is the water connection hose to the flush tank. Now actually I think that means that the previous step where I've unscrewed the four outer screws is actually incorrect for this model even though it quite clearly says for this model that we should take them out. The flush tank here is completely separate from the toilet module, it's only connected via a hose. It may be different on your model, I don't think actually I needed to take those four retaining screws for the filler cap actually take those off. But what I do need to do is disconnect this hose because the hose obviously is connected to the toilet which is going to come out shortly. Other than that, back with the normal steps now. Okay, so nothing's ever quite as simple as it should be because when drilling the 85mm diameter hole, which is to take this funnel contraption, I actually hit uh, a metal plate on the left hand side here, uh, which sounds worrying but not quite as bad as it sounds. And then also here, this is a support, um, it's not, it looks like wood, it's actually a composite material. And you can see here when they've drilled in the factory, they put a hole here um, and that's actually carved in halfway through this already anyway where they've done the drain hole so this looks like as I say worrying it's structural actually it's not I've got a magnet here and if I go there that's where the edge of it is if I carry on down it kind of ends there and if you if I move the magnet out of the way so it's ending there that's where the screw hole is for fixing the toilet down and obviously there's another one there and basically this plate is underneath the plywood and it is to not reinforce the floor in terms of taking weight it's so that the actual large screws which hold the toilet in position have got something to bite into because they would strip straight through this five mil ply and obviously the foam and they don't want to be going all the way through to the outside i could cut out that section of metal there and also cut out that um, support strut there I believe I've spoken to a friend who's a caravan engineer and I believe the only purpose of this really is to stop compression of the foam between the ply and the baseboard. So this is kind of to take the weight but only in that position it's not to provide much actual structural strength. But I've actually come up with an alternative because I think to be honest this is over engineered I really don't know why they want you to drill an 85mm diameter hole and the only purpose is the fan that sits on top it can be then a bit out of position when you drill the hole that's the only logical reason i can see for doing it that way i've checked and the hole is pretty well positioned so it's going to be directly in so i've actually just got some standard pipe bear in mind there's no pressure on this is literally just um, an air vent so i've made this pipe which will slot in there and that also means that the hole on the underside of the van instead of being 85 mil for this it's i think it's 36 mil something like that so it's much smaller hole to actually have on the underside of the van um, and I don't have to cut into either of those beams. I'm sure you could cut away sections of those beams without much of trouble but uh, play safe and also a bit easier so I've just made this up and I will see if that works. And that's my version in place. <laughs>
Okay, so basically we've been away in the van and um, made use of the extractor fan for the loo and all I can say is yes, it does work. In terms of noise, there's uh, it, it creates a slight hum. You can barely hear it from the other end of the caravan, to be honest, um, and it's certainly not annoyingly so. Outside, it's, I would have said, probably quieter than an aqua roll, certainly quieter than the aqua roll pump that's um, running dry, but um, it's not that loud at all, so not really an issue from that point of view. Uh, what you do need to consider is, if you're gonna try and have maximum effectiveness of alleviating smells, what you need to do is just make a point of, um, it's actually activated by pressing the flush. So if you press the flush just quickly, it doesn't even need to really flush, just press that, that will activate the fan. And if you then open the, uh, the trap door on the uh, toilet, then the fan will be running and no smell is gonna come out. You're not gonna smell anything at all from the uh, toilet itself. Once you've then done your business and closed the trap, you can either leave it and the fan will run, doesn't cause a major issue really if, if you do that, but it'll run for seven minutes and then cut off automatically. Alternatively, you can press the fan button, which is illuminated. Fan button, when it's not illuminated, does nothing at all. So you can press the fan button whilst it's illuminated and the fan will then stop. And at that point, the fan button will stay illuminated um, and that will cut off after the same seven minutes from when it first came on. And at any point during that, if you press the fan button again, it will come on and off and so on. But the only way of starting the fan is to press the flush button. And that's the best way of actually using it in terms of ensuring that um, you don't get any smells in the van. The only downside, being totally honest, is it's supposed to give free indications of level or fullness of the cassette. Now it comes up with a green, came up with a green light on ours, but we tested not with that stuff, but we tested just with water and filled it up. And no matter what we did in terms of just filling it up with water, it didn't actually activate the sensor. I've seen a couple of posts about this. I suspect that the actual reed switchboard that's fitted into behind the cassettes in the, uh, the cassette receiver, I believe that might be faulty. So I'm gonna go back about that. I'm not too worried, to be honest. I will try and get it sorted. I'm not too worried because to be frank, I'm not sure anyone really needs an LED to tell you that the toilet's full. It's usually pretty obvious. So that's the one downside, possibly um, an indication of poor QA from Fetford's, Fetford's point of view, or maybe I've just got a dud unit. Uh, but other than that, absolutely brilliant. It stops the smell. It does exactly what um, it was intended to do from that perspective. Doesn't do the level indicator, but I'm not really fussed. I didn't want that as a feature in the first place, really. But um, I will put a note in the description and stuff below if that gets resolved as to what that resolution was. But other than that, great. I hope you found it useful and a, a detailed um, instruction on terms of how to actually fit it and what's involved because some of the others have kind of like other videos have shown bits of it but not the entire process and hopefully I've showed you the entire process. So if you have found this video helpful, interesting or useful then please do hit that like button and if you're interested in seeing other videos I make then please do consider subscribing to my channel. But most of all, thanks for watching.